a freelance photographer, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Brilliant. And how long have you been doing it? Um, probably about 10 years. Brilliant. And what sort of work do you do? I do everything. I do a lot of fashion, a lot yeah. of portrait stuff. Um, I do a lot of DJ portfolio shots. Um, but I also do landscapes. I do, you know, I've just been to Cuba and done some uh, oh, wow. some shots for a P&O ferry. So I do a huge range of, of work. What's like your forte or what's your favourite? Um, I really like doing fashion shots. I really like when someone's got a really interesting idea and you've got to try and work out a way of getting it or yeah. sort of interpreting an idea. I think, I think that's where the creativity comes into it. Absolutely. So what are you going to be showing us today? Then. Okay, today we're going to look at high key lighting techniques. Right, um, and what does that involve? Well, high key is the opposite of what we've got here. We've got a low key setup here in this studio. High key is where you use a pure white backdrop or you, over, you overexpose a backdrop yeah. so that it appears white. Um, and that's what high key is effectively. So is there many ways of doing this or? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Um, today we're going to look at three different ways. Oh, okay. um, we're going to look at, obviously, a studio setup. Yeah. Um, we're going to look at a slightly lower budget setup where you've got two lights. Okay. And then we're going to look at a really cheap setup where you use a window and you use a reflector to, to create ah, the light on okay. the model. Is there any way you could just show me now an example of some high key photography? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, if you take a look at these three images and see if you can work out what method has been used for which image. OK, I'm going to leave Paul to set up the studio and I'm going to have a little word with Emily, who's doing Amy's makeup. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so how do you get a look that both the photographers and the models look? I think the most important thing is the base. OK. Good concealer. Uh, a very good foundation. Right. This is because the camera picks up every detail. The photographer will love you because yeah. less editing. Of course. And the model will obviously love you because they want to look flawless as possible. And do so. people often get the um, colour of the foundation wrong? They do actually. Yeah. Um, a lot of models that do their own makeup, that's where they always go wrong. You should always match the foundation with your neck colour. Right. Often your face and your neck are different colours, oh. which is why. It's always having your own lines. Yeah, oh, so really that's does. an important tip to try and match it with your neck rather than Definitely, your face. Definitely, yeah. So what are you doing to Amy now? I'm giving a highlighter on her cheekbones. Right. This gives a nice chiselled effect. Yeah. Very flattering for the module. It also works really well with the lighting in the photo shoot. So, so what other aspects of the face do you really work on? The eyes. Definitely right. eyes. You've got to really bring them out. Mm. Um, the eyes are really important to contact the camera. So. Um, that's why normally for kind of glamour looks, they do quite smoky eyes. Yeah. Because the, it's all about the eyes contacting yeah, the camera. Yeah, it's all seductive. But yeah, it catches the audience's attention. Definitely. And, and the false eyelashes really help as yeah, well. Yeah, it really opens your eye and it just looks great, doesn't it? And the, the black eyeliner you've got really brings out the whiteness. Absolutely, yeah. And you've got lots yeah. of glitter, I see, on your eyes as well. Yeah, yeah. Lots. <laughs> We're going for a bit of a fashion look today, yeah. so oh, brilliant. we can go a bit mad. Oh, it looks really good. I'm going to leave you to it now, girls, but I'll see you later on. All right, then. I'm going to get back to Paul now in the studio. So, Paul, what's first? OK, well, first of all, we're going to try and get a, a high-key lighting effect using some very cheap and simple equipment. Um, basically, we're going to use a reflector yep. um, and a window um, to get the effect. Now, the window that we've got has got bars on, so obviously those are going to show up in the photo. But if you wanted a pure white background, yeah. you just make sure you found a window that hadn't got the bars on, oh, and, yeah. it, and it would be fine. So um, first of all, we're going to use a light meter. Right. And what's that for? Um, the light meter is going to tell us what settings we need to use on the camera. Right. Um, the way it works is, first of all, you program the light meter with the ISO setting that you've got on your camera and with the shutter speed that you think you're going to want to use. And the light meter will work out the aperture that you need to use in that situation. So what I'm going to do first, because we're trying to get a difference with the background, we, we want it to overexpose and we want her to expose perfectly. We're going to meter for the background just to see what that's coming at and that's coming up at f4 yeah so then what we do is we meet uh, uh do you want to just hang yeah if you grab the reflector and just um, get it into position yeah that's great <laughs> and then we meet her for amy's face and that's coming up at f2.8 right so what would you do say if you didn't have a light meter then Okay, well, yeah, you don't, you don't need a light meter. A lot of people don't use one anymore. Yeah. Um, I personally don't use one any, anymore because obviously with the advent of digital, you don't, you don't really need it. So 
Um, what you do is set your camera to um, the TV mode, yeah. which is where you set the shutter speed in the first place and the camera works out the aperture. Same as we did with the light meter. Yeah. Um, obviously, if we just get a reading off that, yeah, it's reading the same as the okay. uh, light meter. And then if we take a reading, yeah. literally just by pointing it at Amy, yeah, that's given us f2.8 again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, if you hold that, okay, yeah. I'm going to take take a quick shot and just see right. how it's how it's out and just see right. how it's how it's coming out. So ready? One, two, three. Okay, that's oh, great. Oh yeah, really nice. Okay, that's coming out perfect. Um, yeah. And obviously, if it's coming out if it's coming out too dark, you can just change your aperture or your shutter yep. speed accordingly, and then you know to get the desired result. And that's that's the great thing about it. Mm, fantastic. So. Can you tell us what would happen then if we didn't have a window and it was dark? Okay, well that's another story. So come with me and we'll uh, we'll sort that out.